All right, as you all co are coming in the room, let me know if you all can hear me well. I believe we um, solved the problem. All right, you all are coming in the room. I see you all coming in the room. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Sister Luana, all right, y'all good? All right, we good? All right, we should be good now, all right. So listen, y'all share this real quick. Let's get these numbers back up. Yeah, I just needed to make a change. All right, so here we go this morning. I'm going to share this from my personal page also. Yeah, see what, I thank God for modern day technology. All right, we are good, here we go. All right, we are back on YouTube. We are sharing this morning. Sister Burl Jones, good morning to you. Also, Sister Tanya Foster, she turned 50 and I was able to attend her celebration the other night, which was an awesome experience. We enjoyed ourselves and good food and all those good things. All right, so we are back. All right, let's get this done. All right, here we go. So, who is that on here saying good morning, everyone? All right, Tanya Burning. Tanya Burning, you didn't came in on the second wave. Hey, she, Tanya Burden, they came in on the second wave. Well, thank you for the second wave in Jesus' name. All right, the saints then came in on the second wave. I see them. All right, Sister Courtney Denise, Sister Angela from South Africa, Evangelist Burden, Janika. Lord, we had Lord, we had to start the stream over for the saints to wake up. Sister Yolanda, Lord, Tanya, look at the saints catching the second stream in Jesus' name. All right, well, praise the Lord. Thank, thank the saints for coming on in. All right, so let me get started. So we're talking about kingdom resources this morning um, and what we were talking about before we had to start the stream over was about how God will send resources into your life. And sometimes those resources will not just be monetary value, but they will also be people. You will have people in your life that the Lord will use as a resource. Now, I just need you to know that on this family right here, we are resources to one another. If you know that you are a resource to someone um, in God conversations, family say, I am a resource. Let, let me show you a resource right now. On our first stream, we had some spam popping up. And so someone asked me about it. And it was this young lady here who you all, I hope you all would get to hear this awesome and anointed psalmist who can sing classical music in Latin and Italian, um, Sister Yolanda Marie up in Rochester, New York. So now she's on YouTube making sure that all the crazy stuff don't take place. But watch this, that is a resource, all right? Um, we also have Sister um, Lawana Wilcox on here. Sister Lawana, when we started, she created our hashtag, I live to love you and fight for you daily, and now it's on t-shirts, and now it's on our sweaters. Remind me about that later so we can put that order in. All right, we, we have different people on here. Um, Janika has been a partner, a consistent partner and resource. And, um, you know, been very consistent ushers and do different things. And, and now we have, we have different people. Sister Inga Hill, um, who has known me, I believe, probably since I was younger. And now she's become one of our partners. She knew my father's ministry. And she is here consistently. And I believe the Lord is blessed. And there's other ones. Listen, that's right, Elder Di. She says, I am a resource. L let me tell you what's so powerful about being a resource. When the Lord places you in people's lives, I have to go back to the statement that I made. When a person does not have a revelation, Sister Heal, of your entrance into their lives, they will cause you to exit prematurely. And the one thing that I am learning and I'm becoming settled with, it is hard to get people to support you who refuse to see who you are in God now. You know, now, let me say it again, who refuse to see who you are in God now. Now, let me help you get delivered. If you cannot spend the rest of your life worrying about what people think about you who are not warring for you. Um, Tanya, did y'all catch that? I, I want somebody to type it real quick. You cannot spend the rest of your life 
worrying about people. Where's Minister Stephen Richardson? Kima, get him on here. You cannot spend the rest of your life worrying about people who are not warring for you. I thank God for a real Holy Ghost. I'm going to borrow that from Nicole Crowley. I thank God for a real Holy Ghost because I have learned to listen and to discern the rooms and the atmospheres and the people's lives that I become a part of. Let me tell you something. I know you may want to connect. I know you may want to network, but L.A. Spears, let me tell you something, my sister. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit to communicate to us and for us because there are some times when we are not paying attention, we will miss certain signals. But I thank God for the prophetic anointing that I can be in a room and I can hear the conversations that took place even before I got in the room. I can hear the conversations when I'm not in the room and the Lord would tell me, don't go in that room. Y'all not hearing me on this morning. And you will cause yourself to try to connect with people and to worry about people that God don't trust with who you are, nor who you are becoming. Let me say it again, Tanya. There are times that the Lord will show you the reason evangelist burning. I'm not allowing you to connect with certain people because I cannot trust them with where you go. I'm sorry. You know, I'm just a man. I am my my daddy son the only thing that I know is God Jesus Christ and him crucified he's the only one that rose from the dead I can't hear nobody he's the only one that went to go prepare a place for me I can't hear nobody and so the thing that I always have to remember do not put people in a place where only God can remain Y'all ain't, y'all ain't going with me this morning, but it's early. Listen, make sure that you don't make the mistake of putting people in a place where only God can remain. I'm going to say it again. You will, you will put people in places and you will say, you know something, this is my bestie and this is my this and this is my that and I can trust them. But this is the thing that you got to catch right here. When you start putting people in places that they cannot remain, Tanya Bernie, what's going to follow after that? regret, remorse, watch this, distrust, y'all not hearing me, you're going to start having regret, you're going to be angry, you're going to have remorse, and all these things, but when you understand that you got to stop putting people in a place that God can only remain, listen, promotion does not come from the north, south, the east, and the west, it comes from God, that's why the Bible says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due season, and I'm sorry, and I feel sorry for people who always want to connect with somebody that you're not concerned about their life. You're not concerned about their mother, their father, their brother. Only thing you're concerned about is what door they can open for you. But what if they open a door that, watch this, that ushers in your damnation, y'all not hearing me, that ushers in your demise because the only thing you saw them as or saw them for was a resource for you. But before I can say that you are a resource, I need God to give me a revelation of why you are here. Oh, I know that's a lot, but I need you to understand. Before you start calling people a resource, you better ask God and say, God, give me a revelation of why they're here. Give me a revelation why they came and give me a revelation why they staying. I want to show you something on this morning. There are times in your life that the Lord can send people into your life and they can be a resource. They can be a resource. And you know what a resource does? A resource causes you to reach a place that you would not be able to reach without that capacity without that substance. I'm teaching better than what y'all saying this morning, but I need you to hear it on this morning. What a resource does, a resource causes you to reach a place or another level, or another tier, another capacity that you would not have been able to do without that person's substance and without that person's revelation, without that person's word, without that person's prayer life. That's why people call on certain folks for prayer because they believe you are a resource and that you have an audience with the Father and they believe that if they ask you to pray that something is going to happen on their behalf. I know it's Monday, but I feel real good. So this 
morning, let's talk about, let's talk about resources. I, I want to give you a quick testimony. It's 7.59. I'm on the clock this morning. I have an appointment at 8.30, but we are here right now. I need you to hear Wahiba. So I said before we got shut down, Yolanda Marie, two years ago, a woman walked in my job and she said, pastor, she said, <clears throat> she said, what are you trying to do? I said, I'm, I'm going to move to Atlanta. This is what the Lord is telling me. This is this. I haven't announced it yet, but this is what the Lord put in my spirit four years ago. Watch this. Natasha can attest to this. Um, Janika has assisted with this. Jamie has assisted with, assisted with this. Watch this. For the last four years, what we did is for the last four years, we purchased everything we would need for Atlanta, Georgia. Watch this. While I was in Savannah doing COVID, doing all this other stuff, we were purchasing everything that we need. Why? Because when the Lord is going to take you somewhere, watch this. He is going to give you resources because of the revelation that's upon your life. <clears throat> now, I just said something. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just said something. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm. <clears throat> now, watch this. <clears throat> I want y'all to hear this. The Lord will give you resources. Thank you, Sister Shakita. I needed that word. He will give you resources because you are in preparation of birthing revelation. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Willa. I needed that. For the last four years, watch this, Natasha. I said, we're going to need this. Now, this is what Natasha did. I said, Natasha, I need you to go look at this because I need to order this because we need it by such and such date. I said, okay, and I need to see if we can do it. Before I could even get back to Natasha, she said, it'll be delivered Wednesday. I said, you already ordered it? She said, yeah, because we're going to need it. Watch this. We've already used it in Savannah. We've already used it in Florida. We've already used it here in Atlanta. Watch this. You need people to understand when you got a revelation over your life, that they have to become a resource because you are preparing to do something greater. Th this God conversations is only, watch this, only the evangelistic tool to what God is about to do globally. Hear it. Hear it. I, I, I'm about to show you something, but let's talk about resource. Everybody on here say, I am a kingdom resource. I'm not a restriction. I'm not a regret. I am a kingdom resource. Y'all better hear it. I am a kingdom resource. Good morning, prophetess Williams. So the woman says, she says, pastor, what are you going to do? I said, well, this is what I'm going to do. She comes back a year later. I didn't even remember the lady. But she remembered me. Luana, she said, watch this. She said, um, aren't you the pastor? I said, yes. She said, aren't you um, going to be moving to Atlanta? I said, well, how did you know that? She said, because you told me that two years ago. She said, now, when are you going to move? I said, um, this year. She said, okay. She said, and what are you going to do when you get there? I said, well, this is what the vision the Lord has given me. And I have a vision to take this God conversation that I do online into a professional studio. She said, really? She said, she said, well, here's my card. I want you to call me when you get to Atlanta. I said, well, what do you do? She said, I own a film studio. I said, you do what? She said, I own a film studio. She said, I shoot movies. I have a movie that's about to be released in Europe right now. She said, when you get there, I want you to call me. So I said, Elder, that's okay. You know, people say a whole lot of stuff, convention talk. So, you know, <clears throat> I called her two weeks ago. I said, um, this is Pastor Purcell. You told me to call. She said, Pastor, listen, I'm busy right now. <clears throat> she said, but this is what I'm going to do. She said, I'm having a premiere movie that's been picked up by Sony. She said, I'm going to send you um, a ticket. I'm going to send you the directions. She said, and then after this premiere is over, she said, watch this. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk and we're going to make sure you're good. She said, the red carpet event starts at this time. She said, you are in VIP seating. She said, you good. Just come. Now watch this, Luana. I go to this meeting. I go to this, this premiere at Phipps Plaza here, the little bougie place here. And I think that's Buckhead or somewhere here in Atlanta. Watch this. I get in there. They have a whole row of people and I'm sitting in the VIP. And a person comes in and says, everyone is going to have to um, move because this is for the plate. These are for the people who are investors um, and they are um, stars and all this different stuff. So Natasha, I get up and I just said to myself, I said, I don't think I need to move. So, but I'm hearing them saying stars and um, and investors. I said, OK, well, let me, let me OK, let me just take my little brick, my little um piece of bread or whatever this thing is and just so I go walking around Tasha I'm leaving the woman announces in this she said excuse me excuse me everybody I need your attention she said this VIP section are for the actors and stars that would be coming in and for our investors she said but the um, pastor Purcell can keep his seat so everybody in the room look like well who is this dude so you know me I'm like 
I just put the face on you. Y'all hearing me on this morning. See, you got to know when the Lord is using someone as a resource because of the revelation that's on y'all on your life. I'm trying to show y'all something this morning. She announced it in front of everybody. She said, but Pastor Purcell, he can stay in his seat. She announced me in front of all these souls. I said, well, look at this right here. I said, this is a Diane Jenkins moment. Look at this. I've been elevated. Watch this. But let me tell you something. This is how God does stuff. I'm, we're looking at a building. And I know everybody might not be excited about this, but I promise you, I'm going to finish this by, by 8.15. Watch this, 8.20. Watch this. Here it is. Yesterday, I go to church. I'm sitting at um, a place eating, and a man sitting beside me, and we're laughing and talking. He said, what do you do? Watch this prophet is with us. I said, um, I said I'm a pastor. He said, man, I, I knew you were something. He said, doc, you, you, I ain't going to tell you what he said. He said, but I could tell you were something. I said, okay. He said, well, what you trying to do? And I said, well, I'm, going to, I'm about to erect the ministry here. His, his lady friend says, I believe you're going to do well here. She gives the car. She's a doctor. And I said, well, what do you do? He said, well, um, I'm a councilman. I said, well, I just looked at a building in this area. He happens to be a councilman in that area where that building is. He said, if you need any help, if you need any assistance, you call me. I'm trying to show y'all something here. I'm trying to show you something here. When God is ready for you to birth, he's going to put people in place that is going to help you progress. You don't have to pull people from the past because watch this. Sometimes your past, watch this, are not a present revelation, neither a present resource. I'm, teach, I'm teaching better than what y'all saying. Sometimes you trying to pull people, say, you know something, come, can you just, no, 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 no. Leave them where they are and go with the people who have a revelation of where God is taking you now. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it. Now, let me go into my little Sunday school lesson because it's going to bless you. Watch this. Now, we do have a text on this morning. Here it is. And the text is Matthew's Gospel, the 17th chapter. I hope y'all got something out of that. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is. Watch this. Here we go. Now, read it. Now, the Bible says here in Matthew's Gospel, and I want you to look at the 20th verse right low hand corner bottom right hand corner and when they would come to Capernaum they that received tribute money came to Peter and said not your master pay tribute he said yes and when he was coming to the house Jesus prevented him saying what thinkest thou Simon of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute of their children or of strangers. Sister Chantel, watch this. Peter said unto him, of strangers. Jesus said unto him, then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Take it and give it unto them for me and thee. Now watch this. Now this is going to bless you. This is going to bless you. Now this is when I slow down. I only preach hard the first couple of minutes. Now I want to show you something here. This is a custom situation that Jesus and Peter are dealing with. So these men are coming to basically connect, collect taxes. It was also when I was studying, it was also mentioned that in this area, that there was time that coins were found in the mouths of fishes. It's almost like if you went to the beach and you had, you know, you see people at the beach, if you have been to the beach and they have the metal detectors and they're, they're trying to find stuff and they find watches and gold and they find coins and they're, they're looking for treasure. And so when the man comes and he begins to speak, Peter was, Peter had the money, but they did not have the money that the people needed. And so Jesus said to Peter, he said, Peter, what are you thinking? And he said, um, I'm not sure, but you know, I know they're expecting something from us. And Jesus said, well, Peter, let me ask you a question. The people who are collecting the money, he said, watch this. He said, uh, watch this. He said, do they collect money from their children or do they collect money from strangers? And he says strangers. He said, well, that means that their sons are free. 
That elder died, watch this. We, we got to investigate this little part right here. So what Jesus said is, they're only trying to take money from those whom they are not in covenant with. See, there are some people who are in contract with you, but they're not in covenant with you. Lord, I'm preaching and what I'm, I'm preaching better than what y'all said. I, I need you to hear it. There are people that sometimes you have to slow down and you have to ask yourself, why are they here? Why are we connected? I'm, I'm trying. I hope somebody can hear this on this morning because this this is blessing me right here. This is blessing me right here. He says, watch this. He said, watch this. There are people in your life who watch this. They establish spiritual and emotional and convenient contracts with you, but they are not in covenant with you. And you have to know when the convenience has been broken. Woo, my God today. You have to know when the contract has been broken. I'm helping somebody this morning as I'm helping myself. There are times, I want to help me on this morning. There are times that every one of us on here can admit that there are times where we are holding people close to our heart. We're holding people close. And the reason that we're holding them close is not because they're in covenant, but it's because they have contracted with our emotions. They're contracted in certain places in our life, but they're not in covenant. And I believe that on this morning, Dr. Allen, I just need to tell somebody on this morning, early in the morning, Tanya Bernie, I hear you on this morning. You need to know in the Holy Ghost when the contract of convenience has been ripped up, it has expired. I'm done with it. I'm over with it. I ain't making no phone calls about it. I'm not texting about it. I'm not sending no email. This convenience is no longer a contract in my life. I'm not going to keep going back and forth over and mentally trying to figure out why you doing what you doing. Listen, birds of a beaver flock together. And what I see you as, I don't see you as an eagle. I see you as confusion. You watch this. You a raven. You just eating off of my season. Y'all not hearing me. You just eating off of my potential. You're eating off of what God has given me. But on this morning, I need somebody to say, watch this. The contract of convenience is over. I want you to hear something on this morning. Listen to the text on this morning. Then he says, well, the sons, Donna Allen, are free. But so that we will not offend them, we will submit to the same custom. But we will gather our resources from a different place. Oh, <laughs> Natasha, I'm trying to be calm in here. Watch this. I want you to hear this. Jesus says, Peter, we going to listen. Children of God, sons, we going to operate in the same custom, but we just going to draw resources from a different place. That'll preach all by itself. Sometimes, Sister Shakita, people can't understand why you winning. But the reason that I'm winning, because I have too many people on my team that got weight. Y'all not hearing me. I, I just need you to tag somebody in a room and say, hey, you, you, you got a weight on you, so I know I'm going to win. Natasha, listen, you, you one of my weighted part, one of my weighted team members, so I know we're going to always win. Look why he, but I know you weighted in God, so I know we're going to always win. Some people can't understand how you're winning because they don't understand the weight that's on your team. I got weight on my team. Y'all not hearing me. Lauren Simmons, I got weight on my team. When I look at the people on, on this live, I can look at Lauren and I can see this, this intellectual intellectual. I can see this student of the word, this, this theologian. You all may not know it, but she is. She is a theologian in her own right. Watch this. I can look at Janika. Janika is an awesome steward. She's a kept secret, but she has many gifts and many talents that are about to come out and need to come out. If not, she's going to take them to the grave. Can't hear nobody. When I look at here, Tanya, watch this. Tanya just been promoted, just got reached a new level of tier financially in her job. Now she now she can work anywhere she want to work. Is over another division in Europe and the Lord is doing. Look, at our friend on here sister angel poe watch this in south africa she's not just a model now she's doing tv shows and, and i'm praying i can't wait to see her on the big screen tyler perry need to pick you up girl watch this you, you you have different people on here 
Are y'all hearing me this morning that you got weight on your team? Watch this. You have people on here. Look at my friend, Pastor Deshaun on here. She Look, she's a, she's a producer, a promoter, has done wonderful things in Los Angeles. And, and you know, just some, some of these people you don't know, but they're part of this fabric. And the reason we going to win in this season, because I got a weighted fabric. My God, today. I just need the elder die. I just need to flip somewhere now. Now, some of us, they would call us bougie on here because we like the dress. So let me tell you the difference between just buying polyester and buying cashmere blend and buying cashmere. I need you to understand it. See, th there's a difference when you just go get polyester. See, when you get polyester, it's okay. It shines. It's going to be okay. But then after a while, it, it ain't going to wear the same. But when you get a cashmere blend, that's cashmere wool. You know, it's a little warmer. It's nice. Maybe a little starchy. But when you go 100% cashmere, it lays on you like a newborn baby. I can't hear nobody. If you ain't never experienced it, you need a good cashmere scarf. And it's just so soft. It is just, you know, you just put it on and then, you know, it just feels so good. You know, you 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 have tears of fabric. And some people in your life, I'm, I'm talking right. You have some people that you, you, you fabric, but you just ain't weighted. I need you to tag somebody in the room this morning and say, I need you to get weighted. I need you to get weighted. Donna Allen, I need you to get weighted. Come on, Janique, I need you to get weighted. I need y'all to get weighted. I need y'all to hear this on this morning. I need you to get weighted. It's winter time. I need you to get weighted like the grizzly bear. <laughs> you need to get weighted. It's, it's a difference between having a fox and having a mink. It's a difference between having a fox, a mink, and having a chinchilla. It's a difference between having a fox, having a mink, having, um, what else? Having um, a raccoon. <laughs> yeah, have a raccoon too. Um, you have beaver. Uh-huh. You have chinchilla. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. You got to get weighted according to the season that you were in. Somebody needs you to become weighted now, not to wait until you get weighted and rabbit. Uh-huh. You need to get weighted. And I believe on this morning, the reason that we winning, because we got some chinchilla weighted folks on here. We got some mink folks on here. I'm talking to somebody, right? Watch this. Y'all ain't hearing me. Listen, I'm just trying to upgrade you a little bit. Listen, I'm just trying to upgrade you a little bit. You, you got to understand, sometimes you got to go to a different tier. And sometimes you just have to get weighted. They shot, um, watch this, Dyshawn, you know I'm telling the truth right here. You need some people in your life that are weighted in their belly. Watch this. That's how we win it because we got weighted folks. Watch this. Watch this. Understand this here. Jesus educates him on this honest truth. There are those who expect you to be able to produce that which denotes progress, success, ownership, and integrity. Whew. Am I doing all right, Pastor Patrice? Am I doing all right? Watch this. Jesus educates Peter. Listen, it's in the text. You just got to look at it. He says, Peter, I need you to understand something. Patrick, when you are building, pastors, when you are building, leaders, when you are building, the reason that we have to Donna Allen function in a certain tier is because there are people, according to the custom of the land, they are expecting you to be able to produce, which denotes progress. Watch this success, ownership, and integrity. Now, let me, let, just, just let me say something funny. Now, I've, I've owned a couple of cars, okay? Um, Mercedes, Range Rover, Tahoe's, some different stuff. All right, now, now, now the brothers on here, and Sister Tiffany and Elder Di, you know, they, 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 they cracked on me. They, they said, um, they told me I couldn't get a Honda Accord. And, and brother Rodney said, "Now, now, Pastor, you, 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 you can't be the, you can't be our pastor and drive a Honda Accord." I said, "Well, I like a Honda Accord." He said, "Well, if you get a Honda Accord, drive that to Bible study or get to church early and pull that up in the back." He said, "Cause you know, you know, we 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 pulling up in Mercedes and Xfinity, <laughs> all this stuff." He said, "You you you can't, you know, you you just can't do that." And, and Elvis are like, "Yeah, yeah, um." Yeah, I, I, I can see you don't need a Honda Accord. <laughs> I'm like, I like a Honda Accord. Now, I ain't going to tell y'all what I'm getting or what I got, but I just want you to hear this. But but they said, L.A. Spears, they told me you, you, you can't get no Honda Accord. <laughs> I said, I, said I, I 
think a Honda Accord would be just fine. Now, Rodney like, nah. And Charlie like, nah, you don't need a Honda Accord. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There are certain people in your life that you need to tell you you got good intentions, but it's going to produce the wrong portrait. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody this morning. I know it. I know you may want to do it. I know you may feel like there's not a problem, but let me tell you all this morning. There are times in your life that you have to say, Lord Angel Pope said, she said, Pope, she said, I agree with them. Watch this. You got to understand. Look at Shantae Roden. See, see, Shantae, see, you're rich. See, Shantae own three shops in Baltimore. You know, she traveled everywhere and all this different stuff. I think Shantae gonna be with us New Year's Eve in Atlanta. Watch this. You, she just got it like that. Some of these folks on here, they just got it like that. You know, telling me I can't get no hard court. But you need people who said, watch this, good intentions, but wrong portrait. Oh, Shantae, it's happening, honey. I want you to hear. I, listen, wa watch this. I want you to hear this right here. Watch this. Watch this. So it's so important that we as believers, whatever we do and wherever we do it, that if anyone who is a part of customs, meaning the secular world or wherever they may be, when they see what we do, it is almost like the Queen of Sheba going to visit um, King Solomon. And she said, oh, the half has not been told about what you are doing over here. We, we were in Orlando, Florida, and I believe it was um, either Ashley or Tasha. They were walking through. Um, the embassy suites, um, and they had on the I live to love you, um, um, I live to love you um, sweatshirt. And somebody said, well, what does the FFYD mean? And I put it on there for an evangelist to do, so you have to speak to the person. And they asked, what, what is the FFYD? And they said, oh, well, this means, and I fight for you daily. And even I believe it was a Caucasian, and he said, I, I want to purchase one of those. And it was some other people said, what does it mean? And she said, I live to love you, and I fight for you daily. And they said, well, can we purchase those? You got to understand. You, you got to understand. People can see the power of your revelation in your presentation. Y'all not going with me on this morning. Woo, y'all not hearing me on this morning. And Tasha, ain't that what happened? People can see the power of the revelation on your life according to the presentation that you present. That's why I don't do anything cheap. That's why I don't buy anything cheap because those that have struggled, they don't always want to feel like they back in the struggle. I remember my sister and I walking to Suburban Mart when we were younger because we didn't want to bother our father because my daddy was pastoring and you know he was working and my mother was doing it and we wasn't poor. We had a house. We never lights was never off. Always had heat, but I didn't want to put a strain on my father. So what my sister and I would do, we would walk to Suburban Mart, we would sell these bottles of Welch's bottles after we finished drinking, and then we would go to Fish and Pier where Mr. Graham and Miss Graham owned the Fish and Pier Murchison Road, and we would sell those bottles and buy us a $3 fish sandwich with bread. Fresh, fresh fish. Can't hear nobody. If it was rewarding to us, we would take our fish back, we would go eat it. But this is the thing. Now that same sister has her bachelor's. She has her, her master's. Watch this. Now my sister is the head of a company. Can't hear nobody. Even some of the people in her ministry work under her um, management. Watch this. Now she's not just a one home owner. She sold that home and now owns another home. Watch this. But we can still remember the days of that $3 fish sandwich. Watch this. Y'all not hearing me. You got to always remember when you are progressing, don't let people make you feel bad because of where you are because they were not there when you was in that season. People, people don't know some of the seasons that you've been in. You're, they don't know some of the seasons that you've been in. But the, and some people can't understand, well, why, why, why he's so close to this person in the ministry? And this? Because you don't remember when we had the, when they were scraping change out of my truck to eat because the parents sent no money. They had nowhere to eat and nowhere to live and no transportation. And they had none of this. And I knew it was my season, watch this, to sow so that they could see what God was taking them. Sometime the Lord put seed in your hand because he wants you to be the resource that causes someone to see this is how God feels about you. Y'all not hearing me on this morning. Lord, Yolanda, I got the clothes. I got an appointment. But let, watch this. You got to hear this on this morning. There are times in your life where God will put people in your life to sow and to seed into your life so that you can see what God is taking you. My God today. Whoo! My God today. Somebody say he's taking us somewhere. Oh, he's taking us somewhere.
he's taking us somewhere. Listen, I, I got to finish. Watch this. Don't y'all go nowhere. Watch this. I got to show you this. Watch this. I hope I don't get messed up telling this story because y'all know I, I cry in a minute. Some years ago, when I was living in New Jersey, um, there was a woman, married woman, older woman in the church. And while he was used seeing her before, she used to come to revivals with me. And um, I remember she said to me, she said, um, Patrick, I see an it factor in you. I said, it factor. She said, yeah, I see something great in you. And she said, and I want to help you. She said, I see you traveling. I see you evangelizing. She said, but I never want you to travel and be in need. She said, I never want you to preach. And you feel like you have to say something to caress the people or to manipulate the people to get them to give because you got a need. She said, I never want you to be. She said, she says, I'm going to help you. And I said, okay. I said, well, are you helping? She said, first thing I want you to do, I want you to clear up your driving record. She said, I'm going to give you a car. And she said, and when you travel, I want you to always have. Now, I was working. I had my own place, had my own car, but I didn't have her tear. She didn't, I didn't see what she saw. I said, okay. I said, well, she said, now this is a credit card. And she said, it's a $10,000 limit on it. She said, you use it for however you want to use it. And then she said, if it needs to be increased, you let me know. I said, I can't pay you this back. She said, son, people in my tier, we never give it if we can't afford not to get it back. She said, I have, she said, everything that I have is paid for. She said, I'm a VIP at IBM. She said, my house is paid for. She said, do you see these $11,000 minks that I'm wearing? <laughs> I said, 11,000? She said, yeah, but that was 13,000. She said, trust me, I'm good. Because of what she saw in me, I called her, Natasha, sitting in front of your apartment when I moved. And I told her, I said, out of all the people that I met, I said, you were the person. You weren't a preacher, you weren't a prophet, you weren't a bishop. I said, but you put something in my hand and said, I want you to win. She said, I want you to win. And she said, I had the money. She said, Patrick, you had the anointing. And she said, and when I came to your service, and she said, and I laid out in the floor, I still remember, it was at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. It was probably before Pastor Vincent started pastor. She said, that was the first time I had felt the presence of God in over 20 years. Watch this. She said, because I left an organization because they were poor in their thinking. And I wanted to be with people who wanted something. Y'all gonna catch Donna Allen, watch this. She said, I wanted to be with some people who appreciated that I was degreed. Everybody that's on this live this morning that's degreed, I want you to, I want you to type this morning, degreed, degreed. I just want you to type degreed. Or y'all can say matriculated, or, you know, in the area of academia. Um, but I want you to understand, but just type degreed. I want you to hear something. She said, I hadn't felt the presence of God in 20 years. She said, God is on your life and he's really going to use you. Watch this. She was, I was a resource to her spiritually, but she became a resource to me in the earth. And I broke down crying a couple of months ago and I said, I just want to thank you for believing in me. Y'all not hearing me. I said, I want to thank you for believing in me. E even, even Jamie on here, when I met Jamie, I'm so proud of Jamie because Jamie is you know, I've watched Jamie and start off at a, a little candy store. And I've watched Jamie walk across the stage twice. And I said, Jamie, I'm going to push you how I always wanted to be pushed, but I never had it. And so when Jamie walked across the stage, the Patrick that I imagined, she lived it out for me. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. When I watched her walk, I watched her do culinary school. I watched her graduate from Virginia College once. I watched her graduate from Virginia College twice. And when I watched Jamie, even though she didn't see the tears, I shed them. I said, because this one right here, she won. She beat the statistics. She was the first person in her family to graduate from high school. The youngest in her family. She was the first one to graduate from college in her family. So she went first. Y'all not hearing me. You need some people in your life 
that will tell you, I'm not going to teach you how to win and then watch you lose. I can't even finish this. I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. That's my last statement. Just like my daughter Kima here, she's in school right now being a nurse. I'm proud of her. And this is the statement that I want you to take with you this morning. There are some people who are assigned to comfort you. And then there are some people who are assigned to challenge you. And I'm a challenger. I'm going to always push you to a different place where other people have caused you to become comfortable. And this is your word for on the day. Listen, the kingdom resource, this is Monday. I can't finish everything today, but this is what I want you to take with you on this morning. I refuse to pray. I refuse to fast. I refuse to preach and teach you how to win and then watch you lose. I refuse to do it. So if I'm in your life, if you have received this man of God's voice in your life, it's because the Lord has assigned me to challenge you in a place where you have grown comfortable. Tell somebody it's time for you to move. It's time for you to move. It's time for you to move. Listen, on this morning, we're going to start. Listen, I, I asked this morning for some partners. Some of you all came in late. I promise you two minutes. I'm going to ask those that can. I want to change the tier. Some of you all that are my $50 tier people. If you did not finish your $50 um, partner seed last week, you can do it today. If not, if you need to wait. Then do what you need to do this week. But I'm going to ask that all, though some of those have committed to a $100 seed um, every Friday. And you say, Pastor, I believe that I can do it. It's not going to hurt me. It's not going to affect me because I believe that this word is changing my life. I just want you to just type on this morning, partner, because I want you to start sowing on Friday that $100 seed. On this morning, we're going to release a Monday morning seed. Everyone that can release a $20 seed this morning into this assignment. And I just thank the Lord for what he is doing. If you all were blessed on this morning, I just want you to say I was blessed by this word. I enjoy teaching and I enjoy people learning what they believe. Listen, on this morning, if you are able to release that $20 seed or any seed on this morning, but the seed this morning is $20, we always start off with a seed in the morning, on Monday morning. On this morning, I want you to sow that $20 seed. And I just want you to type on this morning, Kingdom Resource. If you are sowing this morning, let's do that real quickly. Kingdom Resource, Kingdom Resource. Father, we thank you. I hope this word was a blessing to you all. Yes, Kima, my daughter said she was blessed. Listen, I want you all this morning to go ahead. If you are sowing this morning, just type Kingdom Resource. I want to see you on this morning. Just begin to type Kingdom Resource, Kingdom Resource, Kingdom Resource, Kingdom Resource on this morning. And as you are sowing this morning, Father, we thank you on this morning that we have something to give. And Father, what you don't give back to us in money, keep our bodies healed. Oof. Keep the thief out of our house. Keep the predator away from our children. Keep us covered under your blood. And Father, we will give your name the glory. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the woman of God, Sister Chapman, who says she needed prayer for her job. Father, we thank you that you are expanding capacities on this morning. And I thank you that the people who are under the sound of my voice, they will never, ever be broke. I want you to hear this on this morning as we go. Some years ago, Jamie lost a job and a homeless woman put almost $3,000 in her hand. And I told Jamie, I said, you will never be broke. A homeless woman put in her hand, Shantae Roden, almost $3,000 and told her, she said, the Lord told me to tell you, you will never be broke. Years later, that woman passed. I think she passed this year. But the thing that is so powerful, Jamie had the opportunity to see that God can send a homeless person to be your resource. The woman gave Jamie more money than she would have probably made in three months. And one time, I'm looking and I'm believing God in this season that the Lord is going to cause a one-time deposit to drop into your life. Are y'all hearing me? A one-time deposit, and when that deposit drops, you're going to testify, listen, Lord, the Lord did this thing. <laughs> he that is mighty has done great things. Listen, Shantae wrote it. The Bible says the Lord will open up your window and pour you out a blessing. Sometimes you just need one window. You just need one window. I'm praying for some of y'all to hit the lottery. Saints, hit the lottery in Jesus' name. 
you pay taxes, the lottery belongs to you. T let folks call it gambling, whatever they want to say. But it was talents in the Bible. Some, of, some buried it. Go use yours at Shell, Sitgo, Walmart, Pilot, Quick Trip, Racetrack, wherever you go. Let the Lord do it for you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Listen, I am done. I'm going to be late for this appointment, but I'm going to make it. Listen, listen, everyone that can, release that $20 seed on this morning. We have already prayed. And listen, yeah, yeah, hit the lottery. Yeah, hit it. Who going to complain if you hit the lottery? People say, oh, that's gambling. I bet they won't complain if you win it. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Listen, you all that are able, thank you for sowing on this morning. And those that say, Pastor, listen, um, we are going to be that $100 tier, that $50 tier on Fridays. Thank you for your support in advance. Listen, you all pray for us. I'm excited about New Year's Eve. The Lord has already given me a word. Can't release it right now, but it's going to be awesome. We're going to release that um, flyer and show you all where we are going. And I just thank God for all of you all. Listen, I live to love you and I fight for you daily. And if you know me, you know that I love you. Listen, we always win, even when it looked like we're losing. Why are we winning in this season? Because we have a weighted fabric. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing. He that have begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Listen, I will see you all tomorrow morning at 730 where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are doing our best to love on you, God's people. We agree, decree, and declare that God is changing lives one conversation at a time. As you leave today, I want you to understand it is time for you to move into your next resource and your next revelation. All right, I will see y'all in the morning. Thank God for all of you all that so love all of you all. You all be blessed. I will see you in the morning. Thank you.